Out with the old and in with just as the old. Paris FC signs Nathan Ake for 15 million on a one year contract. For sure. Rafael Veron retired after we didn't give him more money than what he was already making. But who else left? Mostly just rotation options like Zaruri, Quatang, and the Mission Starman. But there was a key exit. That name was Josta Silva, who had a great season. However, he was turning 30, and I watch Liverpool. I know what comes next when you don't freshen things up. Um. So he went to Real Batiste for 9.5 million. As the season went by, a new contract was given to Michael Massey, which caused Braganza to fill into De Silva's box to box role. For Mocke, there weren't too many signings. A rotational right back named Sasha Boe, Alan Virginius arriving for 3 million because I was trying to find a significant improvement over Musa Conte. Instead, he kept getting called the Virgin Vinicius. Boa, boa, menina. Finally, we signed a Romanian new gen center back from Farul named Yunut Mihalcha. Many loans went out too, including the South African striker whose pronunciation I'll learn by the time he returns. Massive changes were also arriving for our rivals PSG. Lucien Favre finally retired at the age of 71, and the replacement was Wilfred Nancy. The former Nice coach who finished in second has a style of play that requires the team to play with three at the back. It's a shame PSG don't have the money anymore to fund the necessary changes. Tell them to bring me my money. Duranville, Andreas Cambiaso, Old Man Alaba, not as old Leon Goretzka, Alona Manuela Ugarte, and this random German striker all arrived. This was important because we played them in the Trophée des Champions, basically the French Super Cup. The venues of these finals are random to say the least. Mbappe vs Mboop 7 was a little dry. A save from Lavakovic here, a long free kick from Moder there, but in the 75th minute, a Virginia's cross to the far post met Oren Chetin's head, but Dollaruma made a key stop. With a match approaching its ending, Max Ahrens. What a save. Bro, Levakovic popping up big today. Two big saves today. What the heck are you doing, Ake? Not a great way to introduce yourself. The fixtures in August, on the other hand, were better. Three wins, which included four goals from last season's Czech transfer, Peter Kokesh. It should have been four victories, but cue the cannon. Then game, my favorite time when you're in good form. International break. Auxerre proved to be frustrating, mostly due to Kokesh being gifted a goal and deciding not to open it. He then scored this, but was offside. As we entered into the 88th minute, Auxerre won on the counterattack, Gomis was left wide open, and he won them the game. I thought it couldn't get worse, but I got smacked up 3-0 by David Guillaume Strasbourg, which saw Nicolas Pepe score. That was the last straw for Jose Luis Torres. On deadline day, I got transferred PTSD as a bid came in for my Bolivian winner kid keeper. It was a pathetic offer from PSG. They unsettled the kid, who legit signed a contract three months ago. He wanted Champions League football, like he was gonna play in it with Donnarumma at the club. I told him we'll qualify, and he laughed in my face. I refused to pull Salah, so versus Monaco, and onwards, his role switched with Livakovic. It wasn't going to be an easy start for the Croat though. Sergio Conceição was appointed as the new coach, post Lionel Scaloni's sacking for missing out on the Champions League spots. With us never defeating Monaco in this save, that trend would continue. At the end of the half, Vimmer would open the scoring. A bunch of nothing happened for the rest until the 94th minute, where former Paris FC players Vimmer! clinched a win for Monaco. 10th after 7 matches, so let's move on to something more positive. There's not much I need to comment here. 8 opponents in the league phase of the Europa League, and we secured 6 wins and 2 draws. Now guess the 2 draws. If you said Gladbach as 1, you were correct. But what about the second? It wasn't to Olympiacos. It was nearly to Sporting, but Koka scored an 88th minute winner. It was to Spartak. A side that finished 7th in the Serbian Super League drew us 1-1. At our home. And probably deserved it. Funnily enough, we'd meet them again in the round of 16. Back into Ligue 1, like a flick of a light switch, the losing form went away. Marseille were a club struggling such as us, and this six-pointer was crucial. OM created some half-decent chances, but they couldn't stop the special link between Virginius and Mbou. That's all she wrote, and not too long after, our foe Vladimir Petkovic would see the sad. The challenges kept coming, as Mbappe vs Mbou 8 was upon us. This had a quick start. Rua allowed Cambiasso to win a header and place it perfectly for Fabio Vieira. Braganza then made this insane pass to Jakub Motor for the equalizer. But Vieira would get involved again. This instance as a facilitator to Mbappe who took the lead. All of this was in the first 15 minutes, which is a boop's number. The problem is that he didn't start for the first time in the derby. What could have caused this great injustice? Well, I just forgot to switch him with Kokesh. 
Kokesh would miss his massive opportunity to equalize. We'd have to defend well to keep ourselves in the match, but with Mboop subbed on at the break, it was all over for PSG. 10 minutes into the action, Moder finds Shakur, who lays it off to Mboop, but before he can embarrass Dollaruma, Lucas Hernandez takes him and the ball out, giving Shakur a free shot to tie the match. The momentum was with us, and Mboop is put through with 15 to go. Mboop misses the net. That was the moment. Well, we drew PSG for the first time in the safe. That's what I call progress. Progress that uh, didn't continue against Sosho. Rens, however, was eerily similar to the Paris Starby, 2-2. This time from a motor pen and a Shakur first time lob. The boys were fighting, and Masi found Moder in behind, who cleverly squared it to Kokesh with his noggin. And unlike against PSG, he slotted it and won us the game. Unfortunately, the next six matches only had a single victory. It was against Rems, and saw the checkman, whose name supposedly translates to a white powder, getting a brace. There were some decent moments, in particular a draw versus Nice with 10 men. By the way, the goal scorer Budadi came from Blofoot 41 on a free six years ago, and has finally developed into a pretty good squad player. Regardless, five draws in those six fixtures was the recipe for regret. After Nice in early January, we were halfway through the campaign in 7th place, 9 points behind a Champions League playoff spot. It's sounding like the same old story as last year. However, with Crudan's New Year's resolution being more of a glass half full type of guy, let's take a closer look at the results. Adding the French Cup victories and Europa League fixtures, the club was on a 17 match undefeated run since that Monaco loss. The team was almost there, but if we wanted to cement ourselves as a great league on side, the inconsistency had to go away. What better way to do that than finally defeating Monaco. Seven fixtures and no victories, but that changed on a cold Sunday in January. Michal Cha off a corner and an Oren Chetan goal handed us a 2-0 victory. There was an early onslaught from our opponents, but some luck and Lavakovic's big saves helped us out. This would kickstart a Ligue 1 run for the ages. David Guillon's Lorient brushed aside with a Kokesh brace, a hat-trick from the Czech man versus Lens, which proved to be one of the wildest matches of the season. In the French Cup, Toulouse were defeated narrowly by a 91st minute Modere goal. That led to the Coupe de France quarterfinal versus Monaco. Before that, transfers. Jonas Rijksetter proved to be a disappointing player and could never kick on, so he was sold for 9 million to Valencia. Then the saga with our Bolivian wonder kick keeper ended, as I swore after 10 bids, Manchester City bought the kid for 25 million plus bonuses. The only word I can say about you? Ungrateful. That caused me to panic buy this Peruvian keeper for 350k just because I needed someone. The only other signing made was another cheap fee, 550k for this South African player from Kaiser Chiefs. No, I will not attempt to pronounce it. I see him as Motor's heir. Big boots to follow. But focusing on to the French Cup, Monaco gave us troubles as they usually do. Sadly, this time they were able to score first. Too much space given to a guy as quick as Nico Gonzalez. We on the other hand could not respond and would fail to repeat as French Cup winners. Our undefeated run ended at 23 matches. Back to when Monaco beat us. Thankfully, Monaco didn't win the trophy either, as second division side Chateau embarrassed them. It's a shame they had to play PSG in the final. Don't you fear though, there was no mid-season slump as the league on form was looking green. Four wins on the bounce hopped us above Monaco into fourth place. We also got revenge versus Spartak in the Europa League round of 16, in big part to Mboop scoring three across both legs. That led to the ninth duel with PSG. We caught them between their Champions League fixture with Manchester United, but early on, that didn't affect them. The first 22 minutes saw Mbappe and Leon Goretzka adding to our continued misery in this fixture. However, Wilfer Nancy would soon have Jakub Moder imprinted in his mind. Gunshot Moder. Boom, 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 boom! Moder! Dollar Ruma, take that out of your net, mate. That's what Moder says to you. Free kick now. Bragansha. Moder! <laughs> Already on the back of two League One Team of the Season awards, he'd claim a third as he ended the campaign with 11 goals and 7 assists. We were going toe to toe at the Parc de Prince and had a chance to win it, but like the match earlier in the season, it wasn't converted. Then, in the 84th minute, another corner kick for your boys, Paris FC. Bragansha waiting. Whips it in? Nothing. But we have a lot of space. Bakur. Bakur! Is that on? We're beating PSG! Let's go! Bamba! For the first time in this save, PSG were defeated. Bamba Dieng would continue the winning versus Sochou with a brace. And after the international break, Rennes were defeated 1-0. 10 wins in a row, Haddison third. Six points ahead of fifth place Monaco. But we couldn't get away from them. 
as they'd be our Europa League quarterfinal opponents. We've had many wild encounters against them, and this proved to be no different. This one, however, started with a bang. And Boop quieting an already quiet style Louis Deux is one of many highlights of his career. Unfortunately, Monaco responded well, as Rua allowed Diego Morera to find Rodrigo Ribeiro. Then prior to the break, our defense was all over the place, giving Monaco the lead. It got even worse when a Romanian center back decided to play volleyball, handing a penalty to Monaco. Thankfully, Levakovic brought memories of the 2022 World Cup. That was the turning point, as later, our other center back Alvaro Diaz was found off a corner to equalize. With 10 to go, we play out of trouble incredibly, get the ball forward, and out of nothing, our man of the season, Jakub Moder, reacts first to a blocked shot and heads it in. Going home with a 3-2 advantage was massive. The hype was subdued though as we lost our first league gun fixture since September in between the lakes. <sighs> Despite having a man advantage, Mets scored the lone goal, and all the blame went to the chair. Nevertheless, with no goals in the first half, the Monaco tie was in our favor. However, things took a turn for the worst, as Braganza clattered Vimmer for a penalty. Levakovic was unable to save this one, and all was squared. The substitutions were going to be key, which included Bamba Die. With 15 to go, he was in the right place to reclaim our lead. At least, that's what it seemed, but he was offside. No, he's not. Seconds after, Moder hit the crossbar. It looked like Paris was going to win it, but in the dying moments of regular time, Vimmer got behind her back line, and a Romanian man tripped him up. Because of the last man rule, he was sent off. Okay, I need to go back to this offside call on Bamba Dieng. I went to the sideline view, Orion Chetin looked onside, but he's not who the game questions. This was what was called offside. Looks onside to me. Some of you may say, look at it in 2D, and I did. Maybe he's a centimeter offside, but you can barely tell. And I don't play in 2D. This VAR call causes me to continue playing in my more offensive style. We get a red card because of our high line, and we lose the match in extra time because we concede a shot that Livakovic should be doing better on. So the Europa League dream is dead, and I was pissed. The boys couldn't get over it when Strasbourg rolled into town, losing 3-0. This had us only 5 points clear of Monaco for 4th, with 5 matches left. Despite some very difficult fixtures, we regrouped ourselves and won all five of them. Rams were easy, Leon was tough, but we pulled through late, Marseille was wacky, Nice were plain simple as Brendan Rodgers was sacked, and Lille was manageable. If we take our last 17 league on matches, 15 wins, and two losses. That was what we needed as Paris FC for the first time ever finished in a Champions League place. No playoff needed, as third was our number for automatic qualification. Not too bad for a club with a cocaine addict as our top scorer. The downfall of Bamba Dieng has been disappointing though, but not as bad as Monaco's. Two seasons in a row without Champions League football through the league, their only shot for Europe's elite was winning the Europa League. But those bozos got knocked out by the Europa League Kings, who lost another final. <laughs>